Hey everyone, here's a 16 by 20 oil painting this time on stretched canvas. And as you can see, it starts very similarly to when I start my acrylic painting. The biggest difference being because oils stay wet for hours or days rather than seconds or minutes, you have a lot more time to do wet on wet painting. And because of that, most of the time you want to come much closer to a finished version of what you're painting before you move on to the things that are in front of it. As you can see, I did a lot of blending and detail in the sky before I moved on to the mountains and things like that that are over the sky. The other thing you may have noticed a while back, I left parts of the canvas uncovered for my much longer that being because the paint stay wet there's no need to build up extra unnecessary layers and therefore paint the mountains where I know it's going to be obscured by large foreground trees while many people finish entire oil paintings in one go everything being wet on wet without any layers drying I like to be working on two oil paintings or more at a time so that I can take a break from one, let that layer dry, and focus on another painting that's layers have dried while I was working on the first painting. And that way I get the best of both worlds. I can work wet on wet when I want to, but then I can keep making progress with the second painting while I'm letting the first painting dry and not only does that allow me the benefits of using both wet and wet and wet and dry painting methods which can allow a painting to be much more detailed and allow you to make much more nuanced changes to the painting with things like glazes or washes as they're called in watercolors which is where you brush on a very thinned down and transparent layer of paint to make adjustments usually in the value which is lightness or darkness or the hue which is sort of the color tint of an area of the painting and of course you can't do that if the painting beneath is still wet because you'll just smudge everything together and make a big muddy mess and once all of the features of the painting are present on the canvas, then I can move on to finer and finer adjustments and adding finer and finer details. And as I mentioned, in this case, I get to put used to wet on wet or wet on dry whenever I think it's necessary. And once I'm close to finished and I'm just sort of nitpicking, I sign my name to psychologically help myself finish the painting. And I take about an hour and just stare at the painting and really decide the last touches I need to add to the painting which in this case is where a lot of the brightest highlights to really hit that sunlight in key areas and just to make those sort of adjustments and last minute details to add that last bit of polish to the painting. And this here is called a mall stick and it's just something that you hold in one hand and rest against the edge of the painting on one side as it gives you a very stable resting place for your wrist so you could very accurately place fine details. And you'll never see me use a mall stick with acrylic painting because the paints dry so quickly I can rest my hand right on the painting anywhere I need to to have very steady stable control but with oil paints that can stay wet for so long, using a mall stick just gives you that stability for your hand. And in a pinch, I just created this mall stick by rolling up a sheet of corrugated cardboard and using packing tape to hold it all together. And it worked very well and it proved to be very comfortable for long painting sessions. A lot of people use a sawed off piece of a broomstick with some soft fabric bunched up in one end, a little bit like a one-ended Q-tip so that if they accidentally hit the painting with that edge of the mall stick while they're trying to put it in place, they won't damage their painting too much. And for this particular painting, I actually used three different photographic references, one for the sky, one for the overall mid-ground area with the mountains and the waterfall, and a final one for the right bottom foreground area with that sort of cliff surface and that large tree and sort of combined it all together digitally before actually working on the painting. But uh, this is actually a very useful lesson for artists, especially that want to be able to make a living doing their paintings. I remember back when I was much younger and had a lot more free time on my hands, I was doing a painting from a reference of a very wooded area with thousands of trees. And for no good reason, I was obsessing over getting the likeness of nearly every tree from the photographic reference, when that made no difference to anyone other than my own obsession. 
and it was a small painting. There was only so much money I was ever possibly going to get by selling the painting, yet I was putting in countless extra hours of work for this unnecessary adherence to this photographic reference. So not only did I make it impossible for that painting to ever actually be profitable, but the funny thing is, the end result was probably inferior to if I had spent that extra time and effort looking at the whole overall painting and worrying more about overall appeal, lightness, shading, form, the illusion of depth, all those really important things that aren't necessarily directly correlated to what the information in the photograph looks like. And after a few more very bright highlights, here is the finished painting. And I hope it was fun to watch, and I hope this information was useful to you. Thanks very much for watching. If you do like this or any of my other paintings, please visit my page on fineartamerica.com where you can purchase anything from beautifully framed museum quality prints of my paintings to throw pillows, cell phone cases, and even shower curtains of my art. Or share this video with your friends if you think they might also enjoy watching. Your support is greatly appreciated and will allow me to make more art and videos more frequently. And thanks very much for watching.